You're listening to Neo Cash Radio, where we discuss the future of money today. In the studio with you, it's JJ, Darren, and Matt. Scam warnings regarding Tether, Bitfinex, and Empire Card, Bitcoin Cash Attack, and analysis. All this and more in episode 219 here on Wednesday, August 16th, 2017. In the traditional markets, we have gold up to $1,282, silver's up to $17.07, oil's down to $48.77, the Dow is up to 22,024 points, and the 30-year Treasury yield is down to 2.812%. In the crypto markets, we have Bitcoin up to 4331 Bitcoin Cash down to 2000 uh, 298 uh, Litecoin is up to $44.75, Ethereum is up to $301.00. And Dash is up to uh, $228. Thanks, Darren. Just a reminder, you can tune in to Neocash Radio every Wednesday night. Don't want to miss a single moment of awesome Neocash content, including special episodes and bonus interviews. Subscribe to our podcast on Google Play Music, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, YouTube, Podcast Addict, and more. Darren, you guys, you're going to start out the show yeah, today. Yeah, so it. I was uh, doing an analysis of the Bitcoin uh, Cash uh, Network yesterday, and today there was a denial of service attack this morning. So I thought it'd be interesting to listen to our, uh, mention that to our listeners. So this morning, JJ, the Bitcoin Cash Network was attacked with a spam attack. As many as 24 transactions a second were generated per second. For a sustained time, the Bitcoin Cash Network mined a block which seemed to contain few or no attacking transactions. So that's after the attack. After all these transactions on the mempool, uh, it seemed like a block was mined that just completely ignored the attacking transactions. Uh, the next block, however, um, mined, it was by, mined by the Bitcoin BitClub Network, uh, was just under 8 megabytes. During this uh, time, non-attacking transactions were confirmed without delay. The attacker transactions were in a in a chain. Each um, the the attacker's transactions w- were in a train where they they spent the unspent output from a previous transaction. So uh, miners could ignore these transactions if they didn't want the fees. They could. Uh, this attack provides evidence that the that a network with large blocks has a better user experience during a denial of service attack than a network with small blocks. I estimate that the attacker would spend close to a hundred dollars per eight megabyte block. If one 8-megabyte block comes out each hour, which is actually generous for the attacker, then this attack would cost $2,400 a day or $876,000 a year. So um, there's certainly this is, uh, this is an attack somebody might want to carry out because uh, for probably nefarious reasons, JJ. Yeah. But um, if you do, it's going to cost you. So that's what it is. So, JJ, I'm sure that there will be more attacks in the future. That's why I'm, I'm glad I'm working for Dash and can design a system assuming that attacks will happen. Wow, Darren. Yeah, I've stopped even trying to estimate the probability that attacks happen. I just assume they do. Right. And, okay, the protocol has to handle it when there's an attack. Well, thanks for that, Darren. Uh-huh. Uh, next up, we've got a, a report for you here. Now, this has been a long time coming. Bitfinex, Tethers, and Spoofy. So... Bitfinex suffered a massive hack in August of last year, losing $72 million in Bitcoin. The losses were socialized across all users, with Bitcoin and U.S. dollars holders suffering a 36% haircut. This came in the form of BFX token, created out of thin air. The token was meant to represent $1 of loss from, quote, the application of extraordinary loss adjustment, unquote. Even the the management team felt the sting with a blog post explaining that two out of the top 10 BFX holders were on the team. The post ends with, quote, we are actively engaged with efforts to convert certain qualifying token holders to shareholders of Bitfinex and to redeeming the uh, the remaining BFX tokens through a combination of new capital and earnings, unquote. So part of that there, Darren, is that if you are in the, uh, the club, you will become a shareholder instead of enduring the loss of your uh, your funds, which right. is very strange how they're going to handle that. Yeah, this is very strange because, you know, okay, they got hacked, but nobody agreed to anything. They're just like, okay, these are your options. Would you like this? Or, you know, they, know, they don't say, they don't try to, you know, give you the option of just getting your money back and getting it in the crypto that you originally lost. Right. It, it's, they, they are doing all this fancy, crazy stuff, and it, it's, it, it sounds a little underhanded to me, JJ. Naturally, these tokens were allowed to be traded, uh, including margin trading, and Bitfinex is collecting on the debt notes, collecting those fees from trading. And uh, a month later, they released the next token called the Recovery Right Token, 
by trading your BFX, BFX tokens for the RRT tokens, you would waive all rights to any claims and get paid back after the BFX tokens were redeemed. Why would you do that? Now, the whole point of this is is uh, the, the right to recovery token was in case any of the funds were actually miraculously in, uh, recovered through by the authorities or by negotiating with the hackers. And it, it just seems like a, a really strange thing for them to do. Uh, there was a conversion scheme in place that actually gave you less than a one-to-one ratio if you waited too long to enroll. And that's because the price of Bitcoin was on the rise, and there's a little disclaimer added in with this RRT token. Uh, quote, if the value of the property recovered exceeds the amount required to pay back outstanding BFX tokens and all RRT holders accordingly, according to the above, any remaining amounts may be distributed as dividends to all iFinex shareholders subject to the approval of iFinex Board of Directors. All your base are belong to us. Uh, Tether was launched... In January of uh, 2015, as a feature on Bitfinex, Darren and I have always been skeptical about currencies that claim to be backed by the U.S. dollars. Tether's claim to be that currency, backed by X amount of reserves in accredited financial institutions. From the onset, Neocash Radio doubted these claims and took a wait-and-see attitude. Until January of 2017, Tether's were steadily around 10 million coins, or market cap total. Uh, from January until March, that supply rose to almost $25 million. So that's one coin, one dollar each. On April 3rd, 2017, Bitfinex announced they would be redeeming, quote, any positive balances in BFX were rede- redeemed for one dollar per BFX token, unquote. Now, any person looking at that sentence would see it as one U.S. dollar per token, but that's not what they did. Instead, they used a feature on Bitfinex called U.S. dollar tethers in place of an actual U.S. dollar. The amount of BFX redeemed on April 3rd was almost $25 million worth. Leading up to this point, new tethers were being issued in 10 million lots on the 8th, 17th, and 31st of March. And the, and the, the total number of U.S. Dollar, uh, U.S. dollar tethers in circulation by that point was $54 million by April 3rd. And the conversion... Basically, it took whatever was left. So there was 25 million in circulation. There, they added 30 more in than the, to- the BFX token redemption needed. And uh, in effect, they converted one vapor token for another vapor token. The Tether website makes it clear that tokens are, quote, 100, 100% backed by no contractual right or legal claim, unquote. <laughs> Two days later, a suit is filed in the United States District Court demanding a jury trial iFinex, Bitfinex North America, Bitfinex Worldwide, and Tether Limited are suing Wells Fargo over, quote, intentional interference with contractual relations, unquote. And six days after that, it's voluntarily withdrawn. It's unclear how long they were having bank problems and what extent they were. A week later, Tether makes an announcement stating, since April 18th, 2017, all incoming international wires to Tether have been blocked and refused by our Taiwanese banks. As such, we do not expect the supply of tethers to increase substantially until these constraints have been lifted, unquote. On May 12th, not quite a month later, Bitfinex announced they, were, they have moved the majority of their funds out of Taiwan and were giving, a, quote, one-time U.S. dollar withdrawals to customers with more than $50,000. Once again, if you're in the club with Bitfinex and you're a big player, you get taken care of. That's yeah. clearly clearly what's happening here. So neither the Tether nor Bitfinex has made any public indication that the banking problem has been resolved to, to this very date. Mm-hmm. The supply of U.S. dollar Tether has started to skyrocket on May 24th, with $60 million created in three days, effectively doubling the total supply. In June, the supply grew by $120 million, and in July, the supply grew by $110 million. That sounds familiar. Right now, there are, yeah, sounds like a normal fiat institution, central yeah. banking. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean yeah. didn't we get away from central banking with Bitcoin? Yeah, it sounds like a Weimar Republic. What are they doing? Right know. now, there are there are over 319 million U.S. dollar tethers in circulation, over a quarter billion vapor credits. Yeah. With no direct banking available to Bitfinex, it is left with little options for transparency. If they use shell corporations do they, uh, for their banking, they can't show you the accounts. How do you audit Bitfinex? How do they create so many dollar-backed tethers? There's a lot of unanswered questions going on here, and I don't think we're going to get any answers out of Bitfinex because right. everybody that tries fails. Yes, and um, yeah, let me interject here that they are going to refuse service to U.S. Cu- customers. So if you are 
If you are in the U.S. and you have any money there, I would definitely pull it out as soon as possible. And uh, it sounds, JJ, that this might be good advice, even if you're not in the U.S. That's right. We here at Neocash Radio are issuing a scam warning over U.S. dollar tethers and Bitfinex platform in general. In the latest Bitfinex blog posts, new U.S. customers, as Darren said, are being turned away as they pull away from the U.S. market. Now, Bitfinex, who has uh, been sourced heavily in this article, as well as our own show, we've covered this for a long time, Bitfinex has recently pointed out a market manipulator on the Bitfinex exchange. He has named this individual or group of individuals Spoofy. And from the article, quote, what is spoofing, you may ask? Spoofing is placing orders with which you have no intent on allowing to execute. The goal of spoofing is to send false signals to other traders that they will act upon. Placing a large bin bid may indicate bullishness, causing traders to close short positions or possibly even buy bitcoins, unquote. He has a detailed write-up with video and, and, and images illustrating the market manipulation. So this is pretty deep, Darren. Yeah. It's... What's going on with Bitfinex is very much reminiscent of the Mt. Gox days. And I, I, do, I do say that with, with the sort of... Uh, a hesitant uh, regard for using those terminologies, but I, I definitely feel that the, well, for one, the tether is a scam. Yes. There's no way it's actually backed by U.S. dollars, and even if, you, if it was, they have no right to actually give you dollars. In fact, they, will, they reserve the right to refuse right. for they, any number of cases. They have no contractual obligation to give you dollars. Yes. So what, what good is it? I don't know. Now, tether is a part of Bitfinex, to be very clear. Mm-hmm. It was created as a feature originally on the Bitfinex platform, and now it's it's being circulated about as its own sort of its own cryptocurrency that never had an ICO, that never had a gen- genesis block. This is something that's created a pure thin air, and I think that that uh, all our listeners out there should take a hard look at Tether before you decide to buy it. And if you're holding it, well, I'm, I can, I'm not going to give you advice to buy or sell, but you should do something to protect yourself. Yes, yes, even yeah. So uh, that's that's the situation with what's going on with Bitfinex and Tether. They have they have ultimately failed to really reimburse the uh, the damages done to their customers for their website failures. For their their the users of Bitfinex had nothing to do with the hack that happened. They did not make the choices that led to the hack. They did not program any of the platform. They did not have anything to do with the wallet structure. Right. But yet they suffered from it. Right. And lost money while Bitfinex is profiting and it's selling the BFX to- tokens for margin trading. Mm-hmm. You know, like that's that's just ridiculous. So you're going to make fees off of all this extra stuff, off these debt notes. Right. What kind of business are you running? You're, you're making money off of your failure to, to this do, sort of do business what you're has, supposed to. There's no place in, in the cryptocurrency world. This is, this is reminiscent of a central bank controlled fiat manipulated market. Yeah, they're, they're just they're just they're just inflating currency. They're creating currency out of thin air, and they're saying it's backed by reserves they can't prove exist. Right. Warning against Bitfinex and Tether. All right, let's move on, Darren. So, um, so uh, also in the Bitcoin Cash uh, network, I tell you, this is this stuff is like candy for mathematicians to see how all this stuff goes. Um, after the fork, um, well, a few weeks after the fork, the Bitcoin Cash network seems to be healthy. Blocks are being mined around every twenty minutes. This could create slow confirmation times, but every once in a while, we'll see a block over one megabyte, and we can rest well knowing that transactions are being cleared. Uh, I have discussed privately with other people, like Chris Pacey had uh, discussed last episode, um, and it, uh, also Chris Pacey, people like Chris Pacey has been discussing this, uh, and I call it the leaky hash theory, and that's the the idea that if there is ever a case where it's more profitable to mine Bitcoin cash compared to Bitcoin, then we might see a dip in the Bitcoin hash rate as miners switch to, switch to Bitcoin cash. This da- dip in hash rate could slow down an already stressed network, cause, causing more money and hash power to go to Bitcoin cash. This could end up creating a feedback loop where people switch because other people switched. Uh, currently, Bitcoin Cash miners are operating at an opportunity cost. That is, they could get more instant revenue by mining the Bitcoin chain instead. Uh, with the difficulty adjusted expect, expected for Bitcoin Cash in just a couple days, so maybe Saturday, uh, we, should, we should see Bitcoin Cash operating close to just above the 10-minute target and miners on both chains having around the same revenue. Under such conditions, a small price bump in, in Bitcoin Cash could start out 
or could to could actually test this leaky hash theory. We could we could actually start getting some data to see if this is the way things are going to start playing out. Uh, note that if if any of the hash rate leaks the other way, that is, if it goes from Bitcoin Cash to Bitcoin, uh, it will have very little imp- impact on Bitcoin Cash on the Bitcoin Cash users, even if the Bitcoin Cash network had the same use as the Bitcoin network does today. So, like, like if if some uh, hash power goes from Bitcoin Cash to Bitcoin, then Bitcoin Cash can just t- make a 2.1 megabyte block instead of a 2 megabyte block, and your transaction is still confirmed right. at, at a reasonable fee. Um, as as for the market price, uh, so the analysis of the market price, the biggest unknown in my mind is merchant adoption. This is this is a piece of the market puzzle that is hard to predict. Will more merchants accept Bitcoin Cash? Uh, will uh, merchants stop accepting Bitcoin as it's it's already been done. Yeah. There are it, merchants that already yeah. stopped using Bitcoin due to the yeah. cost and the uh, the uh, unreliable block time. Yeah. So we might see that Fiverr w- won't be an isolated example. Time. Yeah. Right. So, so uh, JJ, we'll just have to wait and see as time will tell. Well, right now, the mempool for the Bitcoin network is uh, right around the 70 million byte mark. So that's about 70 full blocks. That they're behind. So just keep that in mind. Transactions have, the transaction fees have risen with the rise in the mempool. And the difficulty of getting your transaction confirmed is now a problem for the yeah, Bitcoin network. Yeah, the Bitcoin network had a uh, 25 megabyte uh, mempool. And uh, after that 8 megabyte block was mined, uh, the, the attacker kept spamming. And, and the, the uh, Bitcoin mempool got up to like 15 megabytes, which, you know, compared to 25, that's not that much. I, I think at some point uh, the the nodes aren't relaying the attacking transactions, but uh, anyway, so that that's that's what I it's it's very interesting to watch. I, I it's candy for mathematicians. I tell you. <laughs> hey, Darren, did you know that I do interviews on the side? No, I, I I've seen some interviews come that's out right. on Neocash Radio since the last show. I've published two interviews. Last Friday, I published an interview with the founder of Sentiment, Maxime Balashevich. They have recently completed a token sale and are moving forward with development. Santiment is looking to offer crypto traders the same sort of cutting-edge data feeds that traditional stock traders have through the Bloomberg terminal. And this past Monday, I published an interview with Sam Sharma, the president and co-founder of Centra. We talked briefly about Centra last week, but I was able to line up an interview in short order. Centra is a U.S.-based company that is using the same techniques that BitPay and Coinbase have used to operate in the complex regulations of American markets. Sam explained how once the current ongoing, uh, currently ongoing token sale is complete, the next phase of beta will start and those participating in the token sale will be receiving the first batch of cards. This public launch, the public launch, will happen later this year. So the, you can check those out at neocashradio.com. Both of the interviews are there. And speaking of uh, something new, Matt, Matt's joining us here. Uh, Matt's been a, a helpful researcher for the team uh, and also helping us with the blog. Matt, welcome to the show. Thanks. Cool to be here. <clears throat> well, Matt, we have some bad news to give another scam warning uh, yeah. for our listeners. Yeah, just uh, this isn't exactly confirmed, but right before the show, I've been looking at a, a white paper and a new token offering from something called Empire Card. It's in the same vein as 10X and token card and, and center that you just mentioned, a multi-currency crypto debit card, and their token sales set to begin in five days. Unfortunately, it appears that this may be a total scam. Uh, somebody on, on uh, bitcointalk.org on a, on a comment thread posted photographs of uh, a French actress that appear to be flipped versions of the CEO of, of this. So it's a, it's a really impressive white paper. It's a, a good looking website, a very well, elaborate deal. Yeah. We're watching this. And so I, I uh, personally, I was the first one to, to be a follower of theirs on Twitter. So <laughs> I, as I was going through and studying this stuff, I've looked up uh, the names of the people and I can't find any real connection to their past. And some of them talk about the college they went to or the former jobs they had. And not only that, but this morning, I was looking at their website, and their CEO picture had changed at one point. On and so my web, my uh, my computer, my laptop had a more updated version of the page, and I noticed that it was a completely different person in both pictures. So I took a screenshot of that on my phone just to preserve. But uh, they, their Slack channel wasn't available, and that there there really isn't much to see about these people. But they are accepting money right now. There's very little information out there. They do have a GitHub repository 
where they are having this token sale and they are uh, ex- distributing tokens. If you send Ether at this address, you will get their Empire token. Now, does that mean they're going to do anything with it? At this point, we're giving it an, a, a scam warning. We haven't mm-hmm. confirmed that it's a scam in the same sense that we can confirm that tethers are a scam. Or at least we can we could almost confirm like 99% certainty until they show us some bank records and uh, back it up. And then tell me where I can go and take these tethers to get them redeemed for dollars. Because that's the second part of it. Yeah, and, and the market is trading below parity. With a dollar, so you know. Well, if, here's the funny thing about that: them, they would just redeem them. They wouldn't. The market trade. floats everywhere except at Bitfinex. <laughs> Bitfinex, the tether is always worth one point zero zero dollars. Well, good. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like every any any it. true uh, market would have a floating rate depending on the buy and sells, but no, no. Bitfinex is like no, it's worth a dollar because we say it is. So anyway, talking about Empire again, be buyer beware about this uh, ICO, this token card sale. And uh, we'll keep up. We'll keep up with this and see if there's any more information next week. I am in contact with Empire. I did send them an email on their website, and I haven't heard anything back from them. So we've done all we can really do to prove uh, their existence or non-existence. And uh, thanks for that report, Matt. Just a helpful reminder that not everything you read on the internet is true. That's right. And uh, so we've got some news here. Uh, see, it's Overstock.com. Uh, during yesterday's quarter two earnings conference call, Overstock CEO Patrick Burns told investors that the site is getting about, quote, $50,000 per week, unquote, in Bitcoin orders, adding that they've just recently gotten the board to approve to change their strategy on accumulating Bitcoin. Quote, we've gone from keeping 10% of what we're, what we're spent uh, with Bitcoin to keeping 50%, unquote. He continued, quote, I mean, we can keep it either in Bitcoin or some other uh, assortment of crypto securities. So you'll see a portfolio emerge there. We've been storing some coins from Counterparty for a couple of years, and they've grown nicely. Unquote. So, Patrick Byrne is, yeah, you know they've they're he's like, doubling down. We're gonna we're gonna keep more of this Bitcoin. He's quintupling down and uh, other other tokens as well. So I mean, one of the you know that that's sort of the one of the early adopters was pa- Patrick and Overstock. Yes, and you know that's like Darren. You asked about uh, the Bitcoin Cash, like. Is Overstock accepting Bitcoin Cash? Well, they are through Shapeshift. I believe. Yes, they've integrated through Shapeshift, and so yeah, but but then it are they're not natively storing their Bitcoin Cash. So I mean, that's that's what that's I'm right. trying to say is the unknown is are people actually going to hold uh, Bitcoin Cash as a, a medium of exchange? Right. So that's that's sort of the uh, we don't really know. We don't. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. I don't know, but I think that's a big factor. I think that. Everything, all the stars are aligned for Bitcoin Cash to work out, but the only thing I don't know is if uh, people will actually start using it. I mean, right? Uh, that still remains to be seen. So, well, so th- there's, it's unfortunate that we've, you know, there's so much positive going on, and if you were in crypto this last week, the uh, the price rise of the tokens uh, really caught your interest. Now. I'm really trying to get together a report for NEO and a report for OMI's Go and uh, some of those other big names that have, have caught a lot of attention lately. And we also have some more interviews lined up. I've, I just keep every, the interviews coming. So Hey, I know you do interviews. That's right. That's right. But you can contact me, JJ, at neocashradio.com. And you can, uh, if, you, if you're from Bitfinex and you're upset that I outed your terrible everything, uh, then go ahead and send me an email, jj at newcashradio.com. And if you uh, have some awesome project that has real provable results and you have products to show for it and you want to be on New Cash Radio, I, I would love to interview you. Obviously, uh, I don't have time for everybody, so I do have to pick and choose. Uh, but anyway, thank you for listening to New Cash Radio. You guys uh, got any final stories? Uh, that, that's uh, pretty much it. I mean, it's kind of quiet on the dash front here. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to go read some more white papers, I think. Oh, yeah. I'm reading one tonight. tonight. <laughs> yes. I, that's, you know, that's, that's the other big part. Is you, you get used to white paper and that lingo sort of like. Yeah, it's actually, I'm just reading a research paper. It's really technically not a white paper. <laughs> well, so. well, thank you for joining us on this somewhat shorter episode of Neo Cash Radio. In the studio with you, it's JJ. Darren. And Matt. Neo Cash Radio. We discuss the future of money today. Tune in every Wednesday. NeoCashRadio.com. Radio.com.